As living things, we require a constant input of energy to maintain organization, grow, and reproduce. And organisms are resilient, acquiring adaptations to fill every available niche in an ecosystem. But we don't exist in isolation. Organisms combine to form populations. Populations of different species interact in communities, and communities interact with abiotic factors within ecosystems. The rate at which energy flows through the system and the amount of biodiversity present influences ecological success, especially during times of stress. Hey, I'm Melanie King from The Absolute Recap, and I make AP Bio easier with podcasts, study guides, videos, and the ultimate review packet. If you're looking for the Unit 8 summary video, you can access it by signing up for the ultimate review packet with this link. All eight units come with the best resources, study guides, exclusive practice videos, practice sheets, and practice multiple choice questions. Plus, there are full-length AP-style practice exams at the end of the course. Here is a short sample from the summary video with 8.2, Energy Flow Through Ecosystems. Living things use energy to maintain organization, grow, and reproduce. A net gain in energy results in energy storage or growth whereas a net loss of energy results in loss of mass and, ultimately, the death of the organism. Organisms need maximum efficiency and energy storage strategies since a food source isn't always easy to come by in the environment. Some of this energy will be spent to regulate body temperature. Endothermic organisms use thermal energy created by metabolism to maintain homeostasis. Generally, the smaller the organism, the higher the metabolic rate and more heat produced. It's no surprise then that endotherms also have great insulating structures, like the blubber of whales and feathers of birds. They also have behaviors to regulate heat, like shivering, sweating, or panting. In contrast, ectothermic organisms don't have internal strategies or maintain body temperature, so they must rely upon the environment. Ectothermic organisms like invertebrates, fish, amphibians, and reptiles make behavioral changes, like moving into the sun or grouping around other organisms. Organisms have evolved unique reproductive strategies in response to energy availability. For example, some plants and animals reproduce seasonally. Angiosperms may produce pollen only at times of year when its corresponding pollinators are most active. Other plants are biennial, with separate years to focus its energy on growth or reproduction. Some animals only reproduce in the spring and summer during warmer temperatures when food is more abundant. Some insects will enter reproductive dipause, a temporary pause in growth and development when environmental conditions are not favorable. Each of these strategies ensures the same thing. Spend the energy only when it is advantageous. Regardless of your ecological model, the base or start of the food chain or web includes primary producers. Autotrophs capture energy from physical or chemical sources in the environment, providing energy for each trophic level above. Photosynthetic organisms like algae and plants capture energy from sunlight, whereas chemosynthetic organisms like nitrogen-fixing bacteria obtain energy from small inorganic molecules. About 10% of available energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next as heterotrophs consume and capture energy in the carbon compounds of other organisms. Since there is less energy available, the number of organisms supported also decreases. There is far more grass than there are prairie dogs, and even less coyotes eating the prairie dogs. If you have a disruption at the producer level, like a change in the amount of sunlight, you can expect a domino effect in the number and size of the other trophic levels in an ecosystem. So if you like my YouTube videos and podcasts, you're going to love the Ultimate Review Packet. It has all of the content you need to understand and the skills you need to practice to get an A in your class and crush your exams. Not convinced to sign up yet? That's okay. You can still listen to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition podcast and watch all of my free videos here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next recap.